Okay, um, I am Molly Jamison. I work alongside Amy. I'm actually a sustainable agriculture and food systems agent. Um, but I think it is important for all of us to be thinking about our health because um, we, you know, we tend to be semi sedentary in a lot of our positions. So I think it's important a thing to be thinking about. And I have Amy here as well. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Mullins, and um, I am a Family Consumer Sciences Extension Agent in Leon County. I'm also a registered dietitian, and I'm excited to be here today to talk to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so time to go to work. How many hours a week do you spend sitting? Uh, so if you guys are in front of me right now, um, I would take some some guesses. Um, but the the real answer is usually a lot, uh, way too much. Um, so Americans sit an average of 13 hours a day, and we sleep an average of eight hours. Um, so that adds up to 21 hours of being sedentary. And research actually shows that we should be standing three minutes for every one that we sit. So if you think about an eight hour workday, that means we should actually be standing for six hours and only sitting for two. Um, so, you know, we're just gonna try to go over some ways that we can help you accomplish that goal or at least get a little bit closer. Um, and the truth is that sitting is killing us. So a study published in the American Journal of Epidemiology followed about 120,000 people over a 10 year period. And they found that those that sat for more than six hours a day were 71% more likely to die during that time period um, than those who sat for less than three hours a day. And another interesting thing about that study is that these findings are actually independent of physical activity levels. You know, so if you sit all day at, at work and then you go home and exercise, um, that, isn't, that isn't going to, I mean, it'll help, but it's not gonna negate those effects from sitting all day long. Amy? Right, so frequent inactivity for extended period of time, um, periods of time, it is associated with higher rates of being overweight, being obese, and type 2 diabetes, and a greater risk of dying from heart disease, stroke, and cancer, which together actually account for more than 50% of all deaths in the United States. Next. The link between our health behavior and chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes, ca cardiovascular disease, and certain cancers seems pretty straightforward. The lack of physical activity, especially in combination with an inadequate diet, will inevitably lead to unhealthy weight and obesity-related disease. But the good news is, is that we can all make changes to improve how much we move and what we eat. Next. So making these improvements can be challenging, especially when it comes to establishing new routines, but the uh, effort is well worth it. Incorporating small changes can improve your mood, your physical activity, your diet, and even your productivity. So what tools can we use to help build healthy habits? Next. First of all, we can stand up. You don't have to do that right now, but in general, standing up is really good for us. Many of us undoubtedly work most of our, our hours in a seated position at a desk. Um, so it's easy to be in the habit of sitting at your desk or workstation in one position, hardly ever moving for hours and hours at a time. Standing up to stretch or to work from a standing position is a conscious decision one that we should all make a regular habit of. And standing has amazing benefits that include toning muscles, improving your posture, increasing blood flow, speeding up metabolism, and even burning extra calories. Next. In addition to the physical benefits, standing up and moving more improves your mood and mental energy, as well as combat, combats fatigue. Even just five minutes per hour will help you feel less lethargic, improve your mental focus, and even dull that feeling of hunger and that tendency to want to snack. Next. So standing requires more energy and actually burns 30% more calories than sitting still. 
When muscles stay activated, we have a fat burning enzyme in our bodies called lipoprotein lipase, um, and that's increased. So keeping large muscles engaged like our legs while standing supports an improved metabolic state that has positive impacts on your blood cholesterol, blood sugar, and blood pressure. Next. So whether at the office or at home, make it a mission to be more mindful of movement throughout your day. Experts recommend not sitting for more than 20 minutes at a time and not standing in one position for more than eight minutes at a time. So the message here is to stand up and move on a rotating basis, take activity breaks, stand while working, but don't be a statue. Um, what are some other ways that we can move more? If you're on a conference call or video call, why not stand, stretch, do some squats or desk push-ups? Take the stairs every chance you get, and why not take your meetings outside? Um, right now, it's pretty hot for that, so I don't know, you know, with caution, of course, but, um, you know, if we can walk the walk and talk the talk by scheduling walking meetings with coworkers, it definitely is um, some good improvement to our health all the way around. Next. So moving more and being active doesn't have to require special equipment or anything more than maybe an exercise mat, a stretch band, or light hand weights. You may consider purchasing some of these things if you don't already have them. Keeping them in close proximity to your desk area will not only remind you to use them often, but will make it easier for simple activity to become second nature and not extra work. Next. Next. Uh, these are some simple exercises you can do anywhere. They will improve your posture, flexibility, and help alleviate muscle fatigue and stress. The first one is um, straight up is what it's called, but it's basically just standing tall with your fingers interlaced and you pull your arms over your head with your palms reaching up and just hold that position for 10 to 15 seconds. And you can just feel the nice stretch and the improvement in your posture. The next example would be the shoulder neck tilt with your arms behind your back. You would grab your wrist with the opposite hand and pull while tilting your head very gently to the side. And then you would reverse sides and hold and repeat for 10 to 12 seconds. And then the next one here is pump it up where we have our both arms above our head and grabbing a hold of the opposite elbow, you would lean to one side and you can really, really feel that um, in your the back of your arm um, and also along the side in your core area. And we would hold that for eight to 10 seconds and then switch to the other side. Um, these are wonderful, wonderful exercises for just, you know, getting that strong flex flexibility, getting a nice stretch and um, keeping yourself on your toes and not on your seat while you're <laughs> at your desk. Um, next, please. Here's a few more. Um, this one here is a seated twist where you would cross one leg over the other, and then you take the opposite arm um, to your knee and twist very gently. You don't want to injure your back, but twist towards one side and hold that position for eight to 10 seconds and then switch and do the other side. Um, this next one is the quad stretch where you would um, hang on to something so you don't fall over. You know, it's easy to, to lose your balance, um, but you would want to hold on to something, grab your ankle and gently pull your heel up and back until you feel that stretch in the front of your thigh. And at the same time, you want to tighten your stomach muscles and your core area and keep your knees close together and see if you can hold that for 30 seconds and then switch legs and repeat. And the last one here, this last example, um, if anybody does yoga, you would be familiar with this warrior two pose. Um, there are a lot of other yoga moves that are wonderful to do, but this one is great. It is, um, it's good for strengthening the shoulders, the arms, feet, ankles, and legs. It's really a full body stretch and hold. Um, and I do recommend doing this again, very carefully. You want to be sure that you are near something that you would grab onto if you lose your balance. We wouldn't want any falls. Next. 
Um, and then here's some things that we can do assisted with um, either a chair, a desk, or maybe even um, a stability ball, although you don't need this, you could just use the wall. This first one is the desk triceps dip. Uh, this is wonderful for um, your upper body strength. And then the desk push-ups or this incline push-up is, this is fabulous, honestly. This is great for stretching your chest muscles and also working on your um, shoulder muscles and your, your bicep, tricep area. And then the wall squat, as I mentioned, you see here in the picture, this man is doing it with a um, stability ball, but you could also just do that straight up against the wall. And um, it's really great to maybe hold that for starting off 10 or 15 seconds. And then as you get better at it, you can um, see if you can hold it longer. Next. And then if you're like me, you know, you start typing away and you get busy and you, before you know it, your hands are cramping and I get under my son all the time for cracking his knuckles constantly. But, um, you know, these exercises right here are really, really good for uh, decreasing muscle stiffness and joint pain. You don't want to do any quick movements. You want to just be real slow and purposeful with these, but um, just really taking care of all the muscles in your body. And especially um, as you're working, you're using that, the, the keyboard and um, we can all get those, the stiff muscles and the joint pain. And I know any conference I've ever been to, they're always giving out these <laughs> stress balls. This one here is a good example. Um, these are great to just to have to play with on your desk, but um, in the end, it's a really great exercise to strengthen your hands. Next. And then you saw earlier that picture of the stability ball. Um, it's a really good idea to consider changing up your sitting situation and getting a stability ball. If you don't already have one in your office, it's, um, it's a great addition. It's a great way to alternate between sitting and standing and allowing more movement while you're working at your desk. The stability ball not only encourages movement, it also activates your core abdominal and back muscles as well as increases mental focus and productivity. It is important to alternate your work position on a rotating basis. You may find it helpful to set up reminders on your phone or smartwatch until you establish a good habit on your own. Next. Um, I recently got one of these under the desk pedal. Um, pedal it's like a an, you know an exercise bike but your your desk chair is the the seat and you're using this under your desk or off to the side and um it's really incredible how it can increase um my heart rate while I'm just sitting still and pedaling it's also great for reducing stiffness and soreness in the legs and lower back and improves your blood circulation um you know, it, walking and chewing gum is one thing, but this isn't really the same. You can actually do this and work at the same time. Um, you know, it does help to improve your focus because you're, you know, you're, you're moving while you're working um, and improves your focus, not only, but also your alertness and your concentration. And these come with adjustable resistance levels and allows you to customize your workout. Next. Um, and another thing you can do is take a stand and get a stand up desk. Um, so I, I am actually standing up right now. Um, I have one of these stand up desk converters. So it just sits right on top of my uh, desk at work. Um, it's really great. You can get ones that are uh, manual or automatic. This one's manual. I just um, put it up and then I also have a mat, which I'll show on the next slide. Uh, but it's really great because it's easy. You don't have to move anything on your desk um, to get in position. So you could be standing for part of the day, sitting for the other part of the day. And it just, it's just great to keep you kind of active. And so 67% of office workers wish their employers would offer them stand-up desks uh, that they could adjust. Um, and like I said, these converters um, really allow you to, you know, not have to move your existing desk. And they are pretty affordable. Um, I got mine, actually, it was pre-COVID. Um, COVID, I think the demand kind of went up. I even took mine home during the year that we worked from home. Um, and it was it's just been really great. And I've used it for years now off and on. So I definitely recommend um, getting a 
stand-up desk. I did pay for mine personally, <laughs> but uh, I think it should be something that we should, you know, really encourage um, in offices to, uh, you know, to consider getting for their employees. All right, so here is the stand-up uh, mat. There's all kinds of different mats out there that you can try. This is, is the one that I got. I'm standing on it right now. Um, what I like about it, you know, is I can kind of lean into, you know, this the terrain and it's kind of squishy. It helps you kind of adjust and move around, um, you know, because kind of what Amy said, you know, you really shouldn't stand in the same position for more than about eight minutes at a time. So the terrain kind of helps you, you know, to stretch different muscles and move around. So you're not standing in one place. And then the, the, the squishiness of it really does kind of relieve, you know, any any pain that you might have for standing. Um, so this the the mat actually was almost as expensive as the desk itself, but I wanted to get one that I really liked. Um, so it was worth it. And I, I definitely recommend it. You know, it can increase your circulation, reduce your fatigue. Um, so there are a lot of benefits. Uh, okay, do you have tech neck? Uh, so the human head actually weighs between eight and ten pounds. And, and when you slouch, you know, your, your head's gonna tilt forward and down and that's gonna increase the gravity, um, you know, the weight on your head. And so just tilting your head 30 degrees can actually put 40 pounds of strain on your neck and then your upper spine as well. Um, so over time, it's gonna lead to chronic pain, headaches, arthritis, pinched nerves, um, a lot of different problems that we can encounter. Um, so, you know, you really have to want to consider to keep keep yourself forward and have good posture can go a long way to relieve this. Um, and really trying to straighten up can really improve your posture over time. Um, and so one other thing you can do is you want to make sure that your computer screen is level with your line of sight. So you're not leaning over um, a lot of time. We we poke fun at our, our coworker, Mark, uh, who's a horticulture agent, because he still works just from his little laptop. And I don't know why he doesn't want to get a, a monitor, um, but I think that would help him, you know, really seeing his line of sight. Um, so really just kind of be thinking about things, you know, we're at our workstation for a long period of time during the day. So all these little minor adjustments that you can make um, are going to help, you know, your overall health in the long run. And of course, if you are having a lot of persistent pain, you really should see a specialist about it. Uh, gamer's thumb. Um, so this is, you know, of course, associated a lot with if you're a gamer, um, but we, you know, we also text a lot. We, you know, we're holding our phones all the time, gripping, tapping, swiping, um, something we do repetitively can also lead to injuries. And it's the number one most searched technology related injury, it turns out. Um, so, you know, rely on texting less, um, you know, maybe switch your hands if you are having to text often. Um, and just be mindful of your posture, um, even when it comes to your hands and that repetitive type motion. All right, email eye. Uh, so according to the Vision Council, it's an eye care advocacy group, more than 60% of Americans report symptoms associated with digital eye strain. Um, so 20% eye-related headaches, 23% dry eyes, and 22% blurred vision. Uh, and so to kind of prevent digital eye strain, um, the American Optometric Association suggests the 20-20-20 rule. So since we're all staring at our computers now, we could we could try this out. Um, so it's probably been about 20 minutes since we've started this uh, presentation. So let's all look away from our computer screens um, and for, for 20 seconds, try to look um, as far away as you can. So 20 feet usually in most office buildings, unless you have a, a really big office. Um, so looking away just kind of helps your eyes relief, not staring at the computer screen. Um, and so that's something that we should just keep keep in mind and do, you know, it might be hard to do every 20 minutes, um, but to keep it in your head, the 20, 20, 20 rule uh, will help you take more eye, eye breaks. Um, and you know, Amy said, you can schedule breaks overall. So I know it's super hot out there, um, but you know, most of, most of the year, it doesn't hurt to go outside maybe during our lunch break. Um, maybe just take a quick walk around the building. Um, if we, you can even organize like bike rides with coworkers if that could fit in your workplace. Um, if you work remote, you could, you know, take your lunch break, maybe just take a loop around the block. Uh, taking a lunchtime stroll um, can, can help, but just kind of keeping you, you moving overall during the day is important. Uh, dressing for success. So um, I like this. You don't have to be stuffy to be stylish. So wear comfortable shoes um, that aren't restrictive. 
uh, wear pants that allow you to do those desk stretch exercises during the day. Um, so I really kind of just make sure that, you know, you can dress appropriately, but also comfortably and so that you're able to move around um, is going to help you to perform these activities throughout the day. Oh, and increasing your water intake. Um, so you could go by the eight by eight rule. So it's drinking eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day. Uh, so it's a good idea to invest in one of these reusable water bottles uh, that you can fill up throughout the day. And by filling it up throughout the day means you're gonna have to stand up. Um, so that helps overall, of course, because then you're moving. Um, and then the more you drink, the more trips to the bathroom you're also gonna have to take. So again, that's uh, just adding to those steps, helping you get up during the day. Uh, so, you know, all, it's all kind of holistic and can go together. Um, and then just kind of changing the overall office culture. So, you know, you know, let your boss know, I'm gonna be taking some walking meetings every once in a while and, you know, just maybe participating in these kind of um, workness wellness activities. Um, and so, you know, when we all, work together, it can help each other. Um, if you happen to work at an extension office, you might have some garden beds out there. Uh, maybe uh, take a few minutes every week to work with your Master Gardener volunteers um, with just some simple tasks that get you out into the garden, or you know, at least just walking around and trying to ID plants um, and you know, get, getting a little better with your plant ID can also um, you know, help you to get outside and keep you moving. Okay, uh, we're going to switch a little bit and start talking about um, food, basically. <laughs> um, does this look familiar? Um, so actually, only 20%, approximately 20% of American workers leave their desks to eat lunch on a daily basis. So that means, of course, that there's about 80% that consume lunch while working at their desk. So working through lunch is often the standard for many of us myself included, um, but it unfortunately it can equate to negative health consequences over time. So um, next. Some health consequences of this, um, of this regular eating um, sad desk lunch situation <laughs> include uh, eating more calories and heavier snacking throughout the day. And unfortunately choosing more of those unhealthy snacks, which are a bunch of empty calories. So we're gonna try and talk a little bit um, more in, in the next upcoming slides about what we can do differently um, to make this better. Next. So there are a lot of good reasons to get up uh, away from your desk and to walk away, to leave and enjoy lunchtime. You don't have to eat the whole time around lunchtime, um, but that it, this is your time. So, you know, doing this can improve your mood it can facilitate uh, productivity and boost creativity, increase your energy level. And getting outdoors into the natural daylight reduces stress and depression. Uh, it will help improve your digestion because you're moving around, um, reduces the mindless eating and can help control weight gain, increases physical activity and improves circulation and joint health and can improve your interaction with coworkers, which is, a, which is a good thing since we're at work. Next. All right, bigger isn't better. Whether you're eating at your desk, which of course sometimes we do, having takeout or delivery or eating in a restaurant, it's important to be cautious about lunch and keep in mind, of course, that bigger isn't always better. Um, our portion sizes have skyrocketed as our rates of overweight and unhealthy people have as well. In the 1950s, you can see from this um, infographic here, the average burger, fries, and soda were much, much smaller than they are now. And our appetites, as well as our expectations, have um, increased drastically in, in addition. So the best advice I could give you is to have a plan or a goal in place and really try and stick to it. Research the nutrition information uh, and make wise choices. You can make substitutions like trading out French fries for a side salad and with vinaigrette or selecting grilled chicken over fried chicken or ground beef. Um, control your portions by possibly getting the kids meal. 
splitting an entree with a coworker or saving half for dinner that night or lunch the following day. And be mindful, um, take your time while you're eating and enjoy your meal. And then after lunch, take that short walk outside and this will improve your digestion and your metabolism. Yep. And of course, preparing your own meal for lunch is ideal. Um, you can save calories, money, and your health. These are just some colorful examples. I didn't make these. I found these online. I think they're really beautiful. Um, but these are just some examples of ways to incorporate healthy foods into your lunch and include a good balance of nutrients and essential food groups. So these portioned bento style lunch boxes or plates are great for helping to control portion sizes as well. Next. Um, unhealthy, uh, I'm sorry, healthy lunches and snacks don't just happen on their own and they require planning and action. So grocery shopping, of course, you know, who likes to go grocery shopping and has its own set of challenges, um, even more nowadays, uh, whether you're going to the grocery store or having it delivered, it is essential that you plan ahead and make the most of preparing for your healthy week. Some tips to keep in mind and to remember uh, try to include leftovers as part of your plan for lunches. Be sure to incorporate simple sides of fruits and vegetables into each of your meals and plan ahead, plan snacks ahead too by chopping up fruits and veggies in advance. And then you can portion them out into individual servings um, by using little um, reusable baggies or um, Tupperware type containers. Some ideas for healthy and easy snacks. We all get the snack attack in the afternoon and maybe mid-morning. Um, so we need some good snacks on hand as well. Uh, some good ideas would be something like hummus and whole grain crackers. Nuts and seeds are a good choice. Low-fat cheese. Popcorn is actually a whole grain, um, but don't pick the movie-style popcorn. We want to get the, the microwavable kind without that extra butter and salt. Um, also a, a piece of fruit, like a small apple or orange or a handful of grapes, or maybe cut up some watermelon. Those are good choices. And then I know a lot of people really like yogurt and myself included, but just be very careful when choosing yogurt. Read the label if you're not already doing that. Many of them have a lot of additional sugars added to them. Um, Greek yogurt is usually usually a good choice because it's got more protein in it and it'll keep you um, from being hungry in between meals. But again, those can also have a lot of added sugar. So just kind of look through your, your choices at the grocery store and, and try and pick one that's, that's got the lower sugar. Next. And then snacking, it can be the downfall. You maybe did good at lunch and now here comes the snacking. Um, but again, we want to plan ahead, have good snacks on hand. Sometimes we can't always do that. Maybe there's a vending machine that's near nearby your office or um, in your building, and we can all fall victim to that if we're desperate. <laughs> so we want to be careful not to make unhealthy choices, um, which unfortunately, many of the vending machines only have unhealthy choices, but some of them don't. Um, several decent options that you could find in the vending machine would include pretzels, almonds, trail mix, um, even animal crackers, dried fruit, fat-free or reduced fat popcorn, and um, whole grain crackers with peanut butter or cheese are also good choices. Next. Um, okay, uh, and you can also use um, different kind of apps and activity trackers um, to help you, you know, I think we all these days have a smartphone. Um, I'm wearing a Fitbit right now. Uh, it's been great for goal setting and tracking exercises. And, you know, if I, if I know I'm trying to exercise five times a week, it does help to have reminders, you know, if I'm at four out of five, I can be that extra motivation to get me up and moving. Um, another thing I try to do is uh, try to get at least a few thousand steps during the work day. Um, so today I haven't been very good. I only have a thousand. Uh, so if I can get up to at least 3000 maybe before I get home, you know, that's also motivation to, you know, walk down to Amy's office instead of calling her on the phone to ask her a question. Um, and just a little ways that you can get a few more steps in, I mean, including, you know, using that 
water bottle um, and taking trips to the restroom. But there's all kinds of different apps and activity trackers out there these days. Um, so, you know, finding the one for you, uh, maybe with reminders just to, to get up and stand and those kind of uh, motivational ways to keep you moving can, can definitely help. Um, and I see in the chat uh, walking challenges. Yes, that's definitely true. You know, getting on those teams and th that way you won't let your team down. Um, if you're having a walking challenge, uh, can definitely help motivate you and the, the apps can help track all of your steps. Um, and so just overall, kind of just being mindful about how you feel, how your body feels, um, what activity you've done throughout the day. And, you know, it, it can be seeming overwhelming at first, but just just taking like a couple, one or two different um, changes in your workplace activities um, can help improve your health overall. And, you know, you really want to discuss the workplace wellness with your office, um, with your coworkers, with your boss. Because uh, I think, you know, if you see somebody doing stretches and, you know, normalize that, you know, not to be like, oh, what are you doing? Uh, that's weird. Um, but, you know, in, in a happy way, you know, what are you doing? How can I, how can I uh, also participate um, so that you're doing these stretches, you're standing up in your office, it just becomes normal uh, more every day. Um, and it's not something that's that's odd in the office. So just be mindful of, of all how you feel and what you're up, up to throughout the day. Um, and that is all we have. Here are some of our resources. And I don't know if there were any questions um, in the chat. 